Okay, today let's talk about how to stay warm in a tent in the winter time. Stay tuned. <music> Pay no attention to those people who only camp and hike in the summertime because I think they're missing out. Winter camping can be totally enjoyable and it's not because you're a sadist because <laughs> you like to be cold. Um, it's because it's so incredibly quieter out here. The crowds go away. The snow really dampens the sound so it gets really super quiet. If you're looking for a serene experience, winter camping is pretty awesome. Uh, also, there's no mosquitoes or bugs or ticks. All that goes away. And because it's more of a challenging experience, it actually brings with it all that much more reward. So to me, it's much more rewarding to be out here in the winter time, toughing it out, proving to yourself that you can do this. But winter camping is not without its risks and challenges. And one of those is staying warm. Hypothermia gets real. So before you go out, let's talk about how you can stay warm camping out here in the winter time. Let's talk about the different kinds of tents that you can use out here in the winter time. Now hot tents are becoming more popular and hot tents have stove jacks in them. And what stove jacks are is simply just a hole in the ceiling or the roof or the side of the tent that allows you to put a stove pipe through. And it's usually, you know, has protections against uh, the heat, fire resistant kind of materials. Now, hot tents are more made for more extreme conditions, like if you're like really, really cold, like below zero Fahrenheit, um, hot tents might be a thing you would consider. And maybe in situations where the expense and the weight and the trouble that it takes to haul one of those things out here is worth it. It just depends. Like you might be going on like, like a multi-day trip in really extreme conditions where you just need that hiatus, nice warm place to be. You might want to take a hot tent if you do that kind of thing. So what about four season tents? So four season tents are obviously, you know, often considered winter tents, but really uh, they're not just about winter. They're about camping in extreme conditions. Like if it's really super cold or if it's really windy and cold, maybe you're getting a lot of precipitation, a lot of snow, uh, where uh, the durability of a three season tent might not be enough. And it might not shed the snow off or, or keep the wind away, it might not have the right anchor points. So I would say pay less attention to the season and more attention to the conditions you'll be in when you're deciding on what kind of tent you're gonna bring. For me, I just brought this, my three season tent, because it's gonna be uh, in the upper 50s during the daytime and maybe around freezing at night. So not too bad, the wind's gonna be calm. So this is gonna be good enough to take my three season tent with. Let's move on to our sleeping system. Now the ground is the first thing that's gonna steal away your heat because the coldness from the ground will just tends to just pull the heat out of your body. So you wanna insulate under you first. The first thing that I brought along with me is my Thermarest Z Light. Now this is about two R value. So let's lay this in here first. Then I'm gonna put on top of that my Nemo Tensor, which is a 4.2 R rating. So with my 4.2 for my Nemo and my 2 for my Thermoest, I have 6.2 R value, which is great. But if you want to go higher than that, to me, better. I sleep cold, so I like to exaggerate that, all these things, a little bit more. Now for your sleeping bag or quilt, you want something that is adequately rated for the temperatures that you're going to be at. I sleep a little cold, so I always make my sleeping bags and my quilts a little bit higher rated than maybe what normal people would. But know yourself, that's number one. Number two is get the bag that is going to best fit your conditions. So some companies use standards like ISO or EU ratings, and that's great if you can find that you'll know that it's been well tested and that it meets some sort of standards. But some companies really don't have and they're not required to comply with any standards. So take a look at what the rating is. Sometimes there's a comfort rating. Now, if you see a comfort rating, that usually means that you will be comfortable 
uh, down to that temperature. The bottom line I like to use is have at least a 10% variance because, you know, you never know how cold it's actually going to get. So you want to leave a little bit variance in there for the weather person, whoever made that prediction for you. Um, at least 10 degrees. I go 15 again because I sleep cold. Now let me show you what I'm going to carry today. Today I'm going to use my Western Mountaineering Versalite 10 degree bag. It's probably a little bit of an overkill because we're supposed to get down to the lower 30s, maybe even upper 20s tonight. Now I also have an Outdoor Vitals Stormloft 15 degree quilt. If it's going to get super cold, you don't necessarily have to go out there and buy a warmer sleeping bag or a warmer quilt. You could actually layer these because they are cumulative. Just like the uh, sleeping mats are cumulative, so are your sleeping bags and quilts. So if I was going to bring my 15 degree and my 10 degree, I'm good to about negative 5, theoretically, with that rating. Of course me, give myself a 15 degree, maybe down to like 10 degrees maybe, something like that. So, um, and that's all Fahrenheit. So let's go ahead and put this in here first. Another option for increasing your warmth at night might possibly to bring a sleeping bag liner. This one is a reactor. It's made from thermal light fabric. And Sea to Summit is what the company that puts these out, but you can get, you know, there's others out there. This happens to be the highest rated one. This is like a 25 degree liner. It's supposed to add 25 degrees. I've never found where it's actually good down to the that degree but it does keep you warmer i would say at least for me at least add another 10 10 degrees with something like this and all it is is really just a it is a little bag you fit into so for those extra cold nights a liner would be great So what about clothes? What do you wear at night for clothes? Well, the first thing is dry. If you've been out here making wood and, and getting warmed up and getting all sweaty or you've been hiking all day and you're sweaty, get those off and put on a dry layers of clothes, right? Same thing as always in the winter time when you're layering, you have a wicking layer on the bottom, you have one or two maybe insulation layers on top of that. And then if you want, you could put a shell over the top of that, like maybe a down puffy. Put on as many layers as you need to to stay comfortable in there at night. But I always tend to bring at least one wicking layer. I have a, uh, a merino wool long sleeve t-shirt. That's my wicking layer. Then I have an insulation layer. This is an alpaca hoodie. And I also have this polypropylene shirt that sometimes I wear. This is like super warm. This is like a heater. <laughs> so I'll put this on from time to time. Maybe if I'm sitting by the fire or something, this comes in really handy. Sometimes I'll put it on at night if I get chilly. So I always bring that an extra layer like this. And then if I want to, you know, I can put a little puffy over the top of that. What about your feet? My feet, I tell you what, once they get cold, they stay cold. My feet, if they're cold in my sleeping bag at night, they don't get warm. I can rub them, I can do whatever, unless I take a few other precautions. Okay, the last thing I do before I get into my tent at night is I'll walk around I'll do some camp tours. I'll do something to get me warm. Not sweaty, but warm. That way, when I crawl into my sack, I'm not cold to begin with. And then I'll put on some socks. These are some fresh, new, dry. These are alpaca socks. Very nice. Very comfy. And then, if it's going to be your extra cold night, I will put on these little down booties. These are really nice. The combination of those two usually does the trick for me. But if it gets really crazy, there's another thing that I can do. You could put another heat source in there. One heat source could be these little gel heat packs. This is uh, Hot Snaps. Now these have this little uh, coin inside of here. You kind of bend the coin a little bit and then this thing starts to heat up this will stay heated for about an hour so they don't heat for a long period of time if you want something that heats a little bit longer and by the way these are reusable you can take these home and once they crystallize you can boil them up and they become gel again and you can reuse them so 
You're not throwing it away. You're not making trash. But if you want to make trash, <laughs> these toe warmers will last about eight hours. So these will last you pretty much the whole night. And uh, they have some um, adhesive. You stick them to the bottom of your sock and you get in the sack and it'll keep your toes warm for most of the night. So this is another great thing. Another trick that I've tried before is the hot water bottle. I'm sure you've heard about that. If you haven't, let me tell you a little bit about it. So you 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 get some water nice and hot, uh, almost boiling or boiling, and you put it into a, into a Nelgene bottle. Make sure that it's a hard plastic bottle. Soft plastic bottles will just melt and you'll have a big mess. So I have my Nelgene bottle here. I'll fill this up with hot water and I'll wrap it in a sock or wrap it in um, some kind of insulation, like maybe an extra hat. And I'll put it in the bottom of my sleeping bag where my feet are. And my feet are nice and toasty all night. So that's another great way to do this. And of course, you want to keep your head warm, right? You can bring along a balaclava. A lot of people do that. I think that's great. I didn't bring one with me today to show you, but I have some at home that I take once in a while. Tonight wasn't going to be too crazy cold, so I didn't bring it, but I have an alternative. If you don't have a balaclava, it's okay. Don't need that. This neck gator works great. Put it up over the top of your head or under your ears, like that. If you want to cover up your nose and face, you can do that too. This works really nice. It's not too tight, so it's not going to keep all the moisture like right on your face like that. It'll just enough to keep you warm. And then if you want, put a hat over the top of that. This is how we sleep most of the nights when I'm out here. Like this. Cuddle up. I'm good to go. Alternative. And here's a tip. It's real tempting sometimes when it's really cold just to put the sleeping bag or quilt right over your face and just get cuddled up inside. Um, especially if you have down. Don't do that because all the moisture from your breath all the condensation from your breath is going to make all of your insulation material inside of your sleeping bag all moist and wet. And guess what? It loses its insulation value. So don't do that. I always have a little breathing hole so all your breath can go outside of your sleeping bag. Another thing that some folks have brought up is an alternate heat source, like this little candle lantern. Now, um, I've never actually used this inside my tent. I think tonight's going to be the first time I'm going to use this. Be careful if you do this kind of thing because, you know, it is obviously a fire hazard. But if you if you wrap it up real good, if you have a place where you can hang this thing and it's not going to get bumped or, or have the danger of flipping off or whatever, just be super careful. Um, I hear this does not actually heat up your tent but it can help with reducing the condensation inside your tent so you don't wake up in the morning with a bunch of con con with a bunch of condensation and perhaps frost all inside your tent. So I'm going to try this out tonight to see how this works. Maybe a couple or a few hours before I get up, maybe I'll light this up and I'll just see if it helps with the condensation. I don't know. I'm going to try it out. So the sunset may be like 15 minutes ago. I went ahead and put on my base layer uh, just so I don't have to get undressed and get cold right before I s crawl into my sleeping bag. But for now, I'm just going to sit and enjoy this fire right here. Yeah. Well, good morning. I got down to, this is 36 now, but it was 32 just a few minutes ago. I was just holding it in my hand. <laughs> I got warmed up. 
Um, so, not bad. Uh, slip really good. Plenty warm enough. Check out the loft on this thing. The loft is what keeps you warm. Plenty lofty. Let's see, what did I wear? I did not wear my puffy. I just put this on just now because I just had a cup of coffee. But um, I had uh, one, two. I had three layers on my top. I had one layer on my bottom. So about a half hour before I get up, I always take my pants and I put my socks and whatever I'm gonna be wearing that I had did not have on. I'll put it inside my sleeping bag so it gets up nice and warm. So here's my pants, my gloves here, my socks. Yeah. I also have my my battery operated gloves, so it keeps the battery warm. And I also keep my phone in here. I also have my sleeping bag liner in in here. Got my long johns on. My booties. And then I also had on my foot warmers. These just come right off. They last about eight hours. They're pretty much done. <laughs> All right, that's what I got for you today. I hope you enjoyed it. Hey, if you like backpacking or hiking or anything out in nature or just being outside in the great outdoors, this channel's for you because that's what I do here. And there's lots more coming. So go ahead and subscribe. Press that subscribe button. Good. 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 And come back for more. Uh, press the like. All the other social media things we do, but I especially like people when they comment. Tell me your experiences out here in the wintertime. What do you like doing? What keeps you warm? All right. Hey, I'll see you on the trail.